Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we're going to look at fraction divisions. And first, we will look at divisions that can be done without using the rule for fraction division. We can just think logically, or students can think logically through these. Then in the second part, in another video, we will look at the actual rule for fraction division. Yes are some divisions that we can do without using the rule. They're called sharing divisions. That means that you can think about sharing between so many people. For example, you can think of a pie or pizza. There's four-fifths of a pizza left, and you're going to share it between two people. How much does each person get? And easily, each person will get two slices, right? So each person gets two-fifths. You can also check this answer by multiplication, because division and multiplication are opposite operations. So I can go this times this and check if I get four-fifths, you know. Two-fifths times two. Is it four-fifths? And sure it is. Another example, and you can make many this kind for your students. Six-eighths divided by three, and there's a picture. We have this much pizza left and three people are sharing it. How much does each person get? Each person gets two-eighths, two slices, of course. Again, you can check it by multiplying. Two-eighths times three equals this. Yes, it does. You just go backwards this way and multiply. And uh, since this is fairly easy, students can soon solve similar problems without a picture to help them. Ten-twelfths divided by five. That's ten slices. And then five people are sharing them. So how many slices does each person get? Obviously, two slices, and they are twelfths. Or similarly here, there's nine slices now, and three people are sharing, so every person gets three slices, and they are tenths. Each slice is a tenth. You can also do this with some mixed numbers, if you choose your problems carefully. One and one-third. Let's write this as a fraction first. Four-thirds. And now it is easy to divide by two. You have four slices and two people sharing, so each person gets two-thirds. Two slices that are thirds. Oh, here, we first change this into a fraction. Three times seven is twenty-one, plus four is twenty-five. So we have twenty-five slices, so they are sevenths. And divide that by five, so each person gets five slices, and they are sevenths. Of course, this won't work just with any random mixed number. Okay, but with some it does. It has to go evenly here. The division has to be even. Now let's look at some more where it is not, it doesn't look like an even division problem. Like for example, one fourth divided by two. We can use the same idea that if you have one fourth of a pizza left and two people are sharing it, how much of the pizza does each person get? See, each person will get, you know, this much. What, what size or slice is it? What, Fraction is that? Okay, you can probably see it, but if the students can't, divide every single other piece here into two, and you'll see that it is now one-eighth. Or here, one-third divided by fifth. Let's just divide this into five new pieces. Each person will get this much, but what kind of part is it? What fraction is it? Well, if you divided this into five and this into five too, you would see that there would be 15 slices, right? And so one colored, so it is one fifteenth. And students might notice with these kind of problems that, hey, this is kind of like four times two type of business, right? You can point out to them that this is the same problem as one fourth times one half. Or this is the same problem as one third times one fifth. You know, it's like finding one fifth of one third. Or one half of one fourth. And, um, we want to do that also because, after some of this, we will want to arrive to the rule of fraction division, which has to do with multiplication, right? Each division in the rule will be changed into a multiplication by the reciprocal. And here's one more of those. One half divided by three. Well, here it is, one of these, so the answer is one-sixth, which is the same as one-half times one-third. Or one sixth divided by three. This one slice into three, and then one of those is one eighth, eighteenth, which is the same as one sixth times one third. 
Here's a, cha a few challenges of a similar line of thinking. Two thirds divided by five. Now we can't divide evenly, easily. But what you can do is you can take each third and divide that into five parts. So this third divided into five parts. Okay? Let's say I have five people sharing this pie. So I give this slice to one person and then from this third I divide that into five parts too. And so I give, you know, each person will get a little slice from here and a little slice from here, right? And this little slice is one fifteenth. So each person will get two fifteenths. And similarly here, 5 6 divided by 3, it looks like it's not an even division, not easy to do. But what we do is, let's just divide each 6th into 3. Okay? And uh, so, then each person will get one slice, one teeny slice, out of each third. This teeny slice, and this slice, and this, and this, and this. So, from this sixth, each person would get one little slice, and one little slice is now one eighteenth, right? That's one eighteenth. So they're going to get one, two, three, four, five eighteenths. Here also, we can note how similar this is to multiplication. It's kind of like five went on top and six times three here. This is the same as five sixth times one, three, one third. This is the same as two-thirds times one-fifth. Okay, and now the second type of division you can do, logically thinking, is measurement division, so to speak. What it means is that we think how many times does the divisor fit into the dividend, or how many times does it go into the dividend. How many of these are in the dividend? How many threes are in 21? Seven. And here, in this division, how many one-fourths, how many fourths are in two? These two pies. How many fourths are in it? The answer is eight, right? Simply eight. Two divided by one-fourth equals eight. It looks a little odd, maybe, to students at first, because you're dividing something, you get a bigger number. But it makes sense when you think this way. How many of these fit in here? Okay. One divided by one-sixth. Think that way. How many sixths fit into one? The answer is simply six, right? And here I made a pattern using those kind of divisions. How many sevenths fit into one? One whole? Well, seven, of course. Well, how about how many sevenths would fit into two whole pies? Is of course, double as much, right? Or t. And then we get, basically, the multiplication table or, or the skip counting pattern here, like that. And students will surely notice that these are like multiplication problems, right? It's like 2 times 7, 3 times 7, 4 times 7. And that is truly the case, because each division can be changed into multiplication by the reciprocal. A few more. 3 divided by 3 fifths. You can think this way. Okay, 3 fifths. I'll just count how many times I can get 3 fifths out of this here. I have my 3 pies here. And so, here's one time, three-fifths. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. And fifth time. So, five times. Here's another one of those easy ones. Two divided by one-sixth. Okay, I have my two pies drawn, so I can even count. But there's six-sixths and another six, so the answer is twelve. But now, let's compare it to this division. Let's compare these two. 2 divided by 4 sixths. Okay, this amount, 4 sixths, is 4 times as much as it was here. So surely it fits into 2 4 times less times. Okay? So I would expect the answer to be 3, right? If 1 sixth fits into 2 12 times, then 4 sixths has to fit into this divided by 4, or 3 times. And I can, of course, check, you know, counting. Well, here's first time are 4 sixths, then second time, and third time. So, yeah, truly the answer is 3. It is kind of like going, you know, 2 times 6, you get 12, and then you divide by 4, which is 3. Okay? So, through all this, 
students will then also notice that divisions seem to be having to do with multiplications. Okay? Divisions by fractions or involving fractions seem to have to do with multiplications. And that is indeed the case, because soon after this, they can then encounter the rule for fraction division, which has to do with changing it into a multiplication by a reciprocal. 